Welcome to the show. I'm Kathy Ireland. Monopoly, Trivial Pursuit, Uno, these are the games we grew up on and have fond memories of playing with family and friends. Today, U.S.-based CEO Linda Ewing and VP of Games Manufacturing Stephen Schuenmarkers join us to talk about how Carta Monday, the company behind these popular games, continues to innovate and manufacture new games to keep us entertained. Welcome to you both. Thank you. We're excited to be on the show. Thank you, Kathy. Glad to be here. Now, Linda, what are some of the current trends in playing cards and board games? Well, what's interesting is we see people going back and playing actual physical board games, but also adding in their devices and creating apps that interact with the game so that our younger fans that do this versus this right. are learning how to play games, some of the classics, but also with using their devices. So we see a lot of trends in that direction. And Stephen, what does Cardamundi have up its sleeves to stay current in this world of online and mobile gaming? That's a good question, Cathy. We have been investing a lot in finding innovative ways to connect digital and physical. Mm -hmm. uh, connect, for instance, a card with a smartphone or with a tablet, for instance, or even a board from a board game. And that could range anything from augmented reality, where you have, for instance, something that's virtual coming out of your card, so to speak, that mm -hmm. you then see on your tablet, to even cards or boards where you have a chip in the card or in the board, and that makes then the connection to the phone. So a lot of, let's say, innovative ways to really come to games that really are built for the future. Cartmundi produced more than 60 million board games for the global board games uh, market last year. Uh, and they range from, I would say, small games for small publishers, all the way up to probably the largest selling board game in the world, which is the Monopoly board game, which we make in many different language variants and many different, I would say, configurations the world over. What we do is we work with both inventors and large corporate game publishers. Our job is to take their ideas and value engineer a proposition to take a product from an idea into a manufactured product that can sit on the shelf that consumers can buy. Card and Mundi board games are unique in a lot of different ways. They have very high quality materials, very high quality printing. Playing cards are always of excellent quality. Production is always on time and quality control is very high. With Cardamundi, we've produced a, a huge line of escape games called Exit. It's really an exciting product. Cardamundi is always in tune with the markets that we operate in. Cardamundi has launched a service for inventors, uh, game publishers, uh, where they can actually create their products in a few clicks online, give birth to their ideas relatively easily and cost effectively. And then if it's successful and they want to mass produce, we have 11 factories in four different continents that can basically help them with that also. We chose Cardamundi over the competitors for many reasons. The quality of the printing is always second to none. The capacity to produce large uh, volumes in multiple languages and keep everything straight and also to keep everything on time. Cardamundi is a very professionally run, high caliber production facility. We really value the relationship with Cardamundi. Linda, can you explain how your new iCards are changing the experience of playing a game? Uh, what's really happening is children, if you hand them a card, and I have a couple of grandsons, they literally look at it like, well, what does it do, Grandma? So the iCards allow them to take a pad like an iPad, put the cards on and interact with something that they're familiar with, a device, but using a physical card. So it links not necessarily a vintage game, but it links a new modern board game into the virtual world. So it's connecting the two and it's letting a child's modern world go back to my world to the world that we grew up in with playing cards. And, and a good example here is uh, something that we recently produced called Warhammer. And every single card you have, you can play, of course, physically, but you can also connect to your phone digitally. And it opens up a whole new world, a digital world, so to speak, for every gamer. So it broadens the spectrum of gaming, so to speak. Oh, I love the innovation of this yeah. company. It's wonderful. Do you find that some of the games have a real universal appeal and some are more specific to certain cultures? Yes, definitely. A good example is, for instance, Japan. Uh, Japan, uh, you won't see that many these type of board games in Japan because it's really more a trading card game market. Uh, mm. Whereas you also see them here in Japan, they're the main driver of games. Yeah. Linda, can you tell us about the process of designing a successful game with your clients? 
So we work with them to create the packaging, the pieces, how to manufacture, we do testing, they have people that play the games. We have design labs on the West Coast and in Dallas and in East Long Meadow where we test the games and prototype them. The process can be quite long. I think one of the challenges in the industry in general is everything's fast now right. and is to develop the game as quickly as possible but with as many play attributes as possible. So we work intimately with our customers to go through that process. Every client's different. Every client has a different vision and it's really up to us to make sure we partner with them and listen to them so that we can execute it in a good way for them. We work with Hasbro, we work with Mattel, we work with Nintendo. We really cover most of the game accounts. We also do casino cards for casinos. We work with toy companies. We work with um, Asmodee, Catan, Wowie. There's a lot of companies beneath the big brands that do amazing games that are small, different types of games. And there's a company called Little Bits, and a woman founded it called Aya Badir. And it's a toy that uses electronics and teaches science. And it was intended to get children interacting with the toys, not just building, but doing electronics and building little characters. So it's really interesting to see what people create and what they come up with. And I believe she's won several awards for the technology of her toy. I think it's fair to say in our industry, we work with everybody, eh? like, like making games for almost everybody from a small publisher to a big publisher. We try to create solutions and work with them. Here we are at Mox Boarding House in Bellevue. This is a board game store and restaurant that gives the community a chance to come together to eat and drink, play some games and create some memories. Uh, this was made as a vision of John and Damon Morris, a couple of brothers who wanted to grow the community in the greater Seattle area. We're really actually fortunate to have the staff we do, which are now experts in the board gaming field, and it's kind of a tough job when you're made to play board games all day. What makes Mox Boarding House unique is that you have the ability to really meet and enjoy your community here. When you walk in, you may be playing with your friends and family, you may be playing in an event with over 80 people, or walking into an open play with your community who you've never met before. You may meet the developer of a game you love themselves, or someone who's never played a board game in their life. Some of the most popular games here at Mox Boarding House are obviously going to be classics like Catan from Cardamundi, as well as Ticket to Ride, Bloom, and Magic the Gathering that really started the company. What makes the game popular today is much different than what makes it popular years and years ago. There's been a huge explosion in the design and development of board games in the past 20 years, and with that comes a huge amount of competitiveness in the design. Now what makes the game very, very popular is its accessibility and design towards a wider audience. Games like Ticket to Ride can hit a huge amount of players, including families and including game veterans, and give them all a wonderful experience. Linda, some of your clients come to you because they're looking for a sales tool, cards, or experiential games. Can you tell us more about those kinds of products? Yeah, they will come to us to promote, so maybe they are doing a new game or they're launching a new video game. So we will create tools that they can use in social media, in play gaming. We'll create events that drive the sales of those games and we design to them for them. It's always changing. So with the RFID technology, for instance, you could have a chip in a card or a 2D image and put your device over it and you could hold it over the deck of cards and the icon on there could tell you the history of a baseball player, every team they've played for from the time they picked up a bat, whatever data you wanted to share. But then we could go in and we could update that data so if they hit a home run tomorrow night, your card updates that data so the card becomes not only a collectible card but it's like a living card because it's relevant as their stats change you can change it in the cloud. We also work with the community. By manufacturing in country, by having facilities all over the globe, it helps us stay relevant in multiple markets because every market is a little bit different. Right, oh, that's wonderful. Your marketing director, Marco Van Hoften, has been known to say that Carta Monday's golden rule is to keep playing. And it sounds like this company is not just playing, it is winning every hand. Thank you both for joining us. I wish you continued success. Thank you. It was great to be on the show. Thank you, Kathy. Glad to be here. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Kathy Ireland.